the entire Rocky franchise in a single episode? Your first one back? <sighs> the hell was I thinking? Let's get to work. <laughs> This is movie night. Hello and welcome back to movie night. I'm your host, Jonathan Paula. After a very stressful and prolonged home buying process, I am finally settled into my new condo and ready to get back to reviewing movies. So tonight, I'm taking a look at the entire Rocky franchise. We'll begin with the original, Rocky. The Best Picture winner of 1976 was released on December 3rd and directed by John G. Abelston on a small budget of $1 million. The PG-rated feature was extremely profitable, eventually grossing $225 million, making it the number one movie of the year. Written by its lead actor Sylvester Stallone, the two-hour story follows Rocky Balboa, a small-time boxer who gets a rare shot to challenge the heavyweight champion and finally make something of himself. The tagline on the poster, his whole life was a million to one shot, is such a perfect encapsulation of what makes this sports drama so engaging. Rocky is the ultimate underdog, a wonderfully kind and determined fighter you'll love to root for. The American Film Institute even named the titular character as one of the top 10 heroes in film history. Sly's nuanced delivery is a heartbreaking one. Rocky is a self-described bum, completely poor without any prospects, but he's always trying to improve his life. He angrily lashes out at his trainer for never believing in him. What about my prime, Mick? At least you had a prime. I had no prime. I had nothing. Exhibiting shades of a young Marlon Brando, this is easily the strongest performance in Stallone's career, and concrete proof he's a capable and accomplished actor. Equally captivating is Talia Shire as Adrian, a nervous pet shop worker and love interest. She's clearly intrigued by this handsome brute that keeps making advances towards her, but too shy to let him into her life. Hey, you wanna come inside? No, I gotta go. Hey, come on, hey, I got some animals. I got these rare, very rare animals inside. Where, come on, come on No, in. no, I gotta go. Well, I gotta go too, I gotta go to the bathroom, come on, come on. I gotta go. Hey, I got, hey, look at this face. Is that a face you can trust or what? Huh? Is it? You gotta stick this face on a stamp. What do you think? <laughs> huh? Come on. Come on in. Their awkward courtship is as adorable as it is heartwarming. A realistic relationship you can't help but smile at. Especially when Sly gives a shout out to his girlfriend during a TV press conference by yelling, Yo, Adrian! Burt Young is fascinating to watch as a frustrated loudmouth who is conflicted between being a friend to Stallone and a brother to Shire. Meanwhile, the raspy Burgess Meredith does marvelous work with his limited screen time as Rocky's boxing coach, who'd rather relish in past glories than acknowledge his mistakes. This core group of four, who would reprise their roles in plenty of sequels, were all rightfully nominated for an Academy Award. In fact, with this honor, Sylvester joined the illustrious company of Charlie Chaplin and Orson Welles as one of only three people to be nominated for acting and writing in the same year. In a role that would be heavily expanded in future films beyond its one-note portrayal here, Carl Weathers is great as the arrogant heavyweight champion, too aloof in his world of fame and excess to notice Rocky as a real threat. The film does occasionally feature boxing scenes, but ultimately this is a cute love story and character study, instead of some title bout. Technically, the film is paced well and edited with careful precision, letting the heavier emotional moments play out uninterrupted while the fights are presented fast and furiously. Some non-traditional framing is utilized to keep the dialogue interesting, and Steadicam technology was utilized for only the third time on film for some of the movie's more kinetic scenes. Composer Bill Conti weaves slower piano melodies and fast strings with big horns and even an electric guitar to deliver an inspiring and moving soundtrack. Perhaps the most iconic sequence in the film was a training montage set to Conti's chart-topping and Oscar-nominated theme, Gonna Fly Now, 
which expertly ramps up the mood for the film's final fight. This montage famously ends with Rocky charging up the steps of the Philadelphia Museum of Art, a moment so indelible it's become a must-see destination when visiting the city of brotherly love. Hundreds of people still raise their arms in victory there every day, and I made sure to do the same when I ran the Rocky Steps during my visit in 2011. The heavyweight battle is a bit anticlimactic, and some of the lower budget audio needs to be cleaned up, but by and large, this is a wonderful experience from start to finish. Spawning six sequels and counting, this rags-to-riches tale has endured for decades, thanks to its hopeful message and lovable characters. Later chapters vastly improved on the fight choreography and took the story to more interesting places, but there's a certain intangible magic about this inaugural effort that makes it such a memorable picture. Rocky is a triumphant accomplishment of love and courage. I think it's amazing. Next, my review of Rocky II. Following the massive success of the original, this $7 million sports drama was soon commissioned, with writer and star Sylvester Stallone taking over the reins as director. Following its release in June of 1979, this sequel scored over $200 million at the box office. Stallone once again panned an excellent script, which opens with a six-minute recap of the last film's ending, picking up the story immediately thereafter. Rocky is struggling with his post-fame life and sudden windfall of finances, while his boxing rival Apollo Creed struggles with the embarrassment of his split-decision victory. The 119-minute film sees Stallone returning as the title character, a goofier and easier-going individual eager to start his post-boxing life. There's a certain beautiful defiance about him now, forgotten by the world, but determined to save his future. He still struggles for greatness without reaching desperation. Girlfriend-turned-wife Talia Shire is incredible in a role that allows her to really blossom and gain confidence, quietly asking her husband for one favor before his big match. Win. It's a sweet moment delivered with power and enthusiasm that wonderfully kicks off the remainder of the exciting PG-rated film. Burt Young and Burgess Meredith return as well, with the former reduced to a much smaller, inconsequential role, while the latter gets a few key scenes to really shine as the cranky old manager. Rocky, got anything derogatory to say about the champ? Derogatory? Yeah, he's great. How about some clowning shots, Apollo? Yeah, yeah. Does this look like a circus to you, man? Come November, you're mine. Very upset. Back-to-back -back training montages set the stage for the final fight, with the second montage featuring an awesomely improved version of Rocky's famous run up the art museum steps, this time followed by hordes of adoring children. The tracking shot of Sly hitting Tom Cruise-like speeds and pulling away from this group of kids is a great moment that always gets me pumped for what comes next. Speaking of which, Rocky and Creed's big rematch is a more interesting and involved production than their first meeting. Not only are both characters more invested, the technical aspects of the climax are better handled. Devoting twice as much screen time to the title match allows for a more detailed account of who's in command during each round, with more precise cinematography and close-ups to really sell the drama. It reportedly took eight months to edit the scene to Stallone's satisfaction, though. Rocky II may not be a perfect film, but it may very well be the perfect sequel. It builds on the first and somewhat while introducing new consequences and challenges for our hero, without ever abandoning its winning formula. The existing narrative threads are continued in an organic and believable way, opening up to larger problems and situations. In short, it successfully increases the stakes while staying faithful to the iconic characters. In a way, the accomplishments here are more impressive as a result, as Stallone succeeds in getting you to root for a character that isn't really an underdog anymore. Must-see viewing for all boxing fans, Rocky II is a bigger, better version of its predecessor, and an amazing film. Now let's talk about Rocky III. Released on May 28, 1982, the third entry in the Rocky franchise was a huge success, earning $253 million at the box office. Sylvester Stallone returns as writer, director, and of course, the title character. After winning the championship belt, the 99-minute sports drama follows Rocky's, ahem, Rocky time dealing with superstardom, when a frustrated up-and-coming boxer challenges his title. The trajectory of Rocky's life parallels Carl's Weathers' portrayal of Apollo Creed in earlier installments, preoccupied with fame and fortune, and resting on his laurels. Rocky has transformed into a more sophisticated individual, with nicer clothes and a better dialect. And although this departure allows for more compelling narrative, it just doesn't feel faithful to the character. Reportedly, however, these changes were inspired by Stallone's personal experiences with fame, and how out of touch with normality he became after his success as a movie star. I suppose it works to an extent, but when marathoning the series back-to-back, -back, this shift is definitely jarring. The entire supporting cast once again return with excellent performances. Burt Young, Talia Shira, and Burgess Meredith all get a few key scenes to really deliver some powerful lines. But it's Weathers who sees a noticeable bump in responsibilities, which affords him the opportunity to humanize his character beyond the one-note villain he used to be. The odds against Balboa making a comeback at 34 are very long indeed. Can he do it? Most experts doubt it. 
Balboa was a fine champion, but his time has passed. I wish him luck. Don't listen to it, Rocky. No, do listen to it, Rock. When this is over, a lot of folks are going to owe you an engraved apology. And you're going to owe me a big favor. What favor? When it's over. Hmm? Making his feature film debut, Mr. T is perfect in his limited role as an angry fighter, hungry for a shot at the championship, trash-talking his adversary by remarking, I pity the fool. Rocky, meanwhile, is motivated to fight back, if only to prove to himself he still has what it takes when he screams, Nothing is real if you don't believe in who you are. Incorporating real-world merchandise and the unveiling of a large bronze statue that actually exists at the Philadelphia Art Museum in real life, Rocky III becomes almost self-referential at times. Within the context of the narrative, a Rocky pinball machine certainly makes sense, but knowing that this arcade machine actually does exist as a product for the film took me out of the moment a bit. An early fight between Stallone and Hulk Hogan is similarly too goofy and over the top to really fit the otherwise serious tone of the film. Plus, it fails to surface the plot in any meaningful way. Bill Conti's familiar themes are once again heard in full force during the training montage, but it's the inclusion of Survivor's Oscar-nominated Eye of the Tiger that really kicks this picture off in a powerful way. Less about the heroic underdog and more about revenge and redemption. This is an interesting chapter in the franchise, but definitely not the strongest. I think Rocky III is a pretty cool film. Not even halfway done, here's my review for Rocky IV. Released just before Thanksgiving in 1985, this $28 million production took home over $300 million, making it the highest grossing entry in the saga. Writer, director, and actor Sylvester Stallone continues the title character's story by taking it to the next logical step, international champion. When Rocky's former friend and rival falls to an intimidating Soviet boxer, he travels to the heart of Russia for an improbable revenge fight. All of the actors playing surviving characters return with more of the same, capable and layered performances that likely became easier for the group as time went on. After auditioning over 8,000 different people, Dolph Lundgren won the role as the quiet but frightening Soviet fighter. The 6'5 Swedish actor does well in his breakout role, looking powerful and aggressive with just a silent stare. He threatens Rocky before their big match by quietly promising, I must break you. After the first couple films, Stallone actually admitted to running out of ideas, which is why the series began to focus more and more on training and boxing than on the characters' relationships and struggles. Rocky IV lacks any emotional weight as a result. In fact, the 91-minute film has barely any story at all. It's just one long string of montages. Now, don't get me wrong, they're probably the greatest montages in the history of cinema, even better than those in the earlier Rocky films. They're set to the awesomely 80s sounds of Survivor, Vandenberg, and Robert Tepper, with excellent results. A flashback montage, intercut with the focused stares of a determined Stallone driving his car late at night, is a particularly well-edited sequence that reminds audiences of all the best moments that came before. Replacing series regular Bill Conti, Vince DiNicola's original score makes great use of intense rhythm and synthesizers that serve as excellent motivational background music. At only an hour and a half, it's the shortest film in the franchise, and seriously, the aforementioned montages take up almost a full third of the non-credits runtime. This film is pure, unadulterated, spoon-fed propaganda. The picture's pro-American message is about as subtle as a punch to the face. Although Stallone gets credit for painting the Russians as somewhat sympathetic and redeemable characters, there's no surprise this East vs. West story was the most successful sports movie for the next quarter century. At the height of the Cold War, American audiences just wanted to see the Philly underdog kick some Ruski butt. And on that primal level, the PG-rated film delivers spectacularly. Certainly a product of its time, Rocky IV still has the same lovable characters, grit, and charm of its predecessors. It's just missing a compelling or even believable story. Watch this one for the excellent soundtrack and flag-waving patriotism. I thought it was very good. Before we continue, I want to see what you thought of this seven-picture series. So for tonight's poll question, how would you rank each of the Rocky films? Leave your list as a comment below. Three more movies still to go, so let's continue with Rocky V. Widely regarded as the black sheep of the franchise, this $42 million sports drama still managed to earn $120 million after its November 1990 release. Sylvester Stallone returns with another new script, and of course, as the title character, but he handed back the directing responsibilities to John G. Abelston, who helmed the original picture 14 years earlier. Reluctantly retired from boxing due to medical dangers, Rocky takes on a new protege while his family struggles with bankruptcy. 
After all, with four movies of underdog victories and successes, how do you convince audiences that the People's Champion is still somehow worth rooting for? Easy. You tear them down and make them start over from scratch. Despite some glaring continuity issues, like Rocky coming home to an entirely different mansion and a son who was five years older, this 104 minute film actually starts off particularly strong. The reverse parallel of Rocky's ascent in the earlier pictures is poignant and well handled, like when Stallone and Talia Shire reminisce over their old clothes, some of their only possessions following an estate auction. A newly filmed flashback sequence with Burgess Meredith is also a very strong addition that nicely fills in some of the backstory to his character's motivation for originally training the Italian Stallion. He confesses in this emotional monologue, I think that people die sometimes when they don't want to live no more. Rocky, however, seems to have regressed in intelligence, speaking with an even more pronounced slower and dumber vocabulary. Sly's real-life son Sage Stallone joins the cast as Rocky Jr., and this father-son relationship allows for some effective domestic drama, fitting with the Rocky mythos, as Sage learns to stand up for himself even when others don't believe in him. Despite some extremely questionable 90s-era earrings, the younger Stallone does an above-average job playing opposite his father. Speaking of regrettable period-specific choices, the funky hip-hop and swing-beat soundtrack dates this picture badly, as an urbanized version of Gonna Fly Now is not what this picture needed to stay relevant. But a questionable wardrobe and bad music aren't nearly as problematic as the more blatant issues with the script. There are two critical flaws with the narrative. First, Rocky's new trainee is shown to be a hard-working, talented, and generally polite individual. But all of the characters around him continually question his heart. It might sound like a superficial way to judge someone, but ultimately the film never adequately illustrates why this young fighter shouldn't be trusted. So when he does eventually betray his mentor, the audience is left asking, why? While Burt Young's character effectively says, I told you so. The second big mistake is constantly setting up Rocky's potential brain damage, only to completely ignore this consequence in the picture's climactic street brawl. This is Filmmaking 101. Don't set something up if you don't intend to pay it off. Reportedly, the original ending would have seen the title character getting killed, but Stallone eventually decided against it. He just never adjusted the rest of the script to match. The only Rocky film not to feature a training montage, there's definitely a loss of familiarity with this picture. And for 16 years, it stood as the presumed ending to the series, which explains its poor reception with audiences. But when you know there's still another chapter waiting, this picture's disappointing finish stings a lot less. Rocky V undoubtedly marks the low point in this series, but there's still a lot of enjoyable and moving material here for all Rocky fans. Those wanting entertaining boxing, however, need not apply. I thought it was an alright film. Pressing onward, here are my thoughts on Rocky Balboa. The sixth installment in the Rocky franchise, once again written, directed, and starring Sylvester Stallone, was released in December of 2006, a full 30 years after the premiere of Part 1. The $24 million sequel exceeded box office expectations and took home almost $200 million between tickets and DVD sales. Following the death of his wife, the title character opts to defy the odds and get back into the ring for one more fight. At 60 years old, Sly still throwing punches could have easily been met with laughter and incredulity, but once again he taps into that well of personal truth and semi-biographical struggles to pull out a believable and touching script. Killing off Talia Shire's character was an excellent decision that really humanizes Rocky as a mournful husband, allowing audiences to root for his success all over again. But I was disappointed he dropped the Roman numerals from the title. Blatantly ignoring two separate medical consequences established in previous films, the Italian Stallion is an angrier, more defiant protagonist than we've ever seen, especially when he passionately pleads for his case to fight in front of a boxing licensing board. I mean, maybe you're doing your job, but why you gotta stop me from doing mine? Because if you're willing to go through all the battling you got to go through to get to where you want to get, who's got the right to stop you? I mean, maybe some of you guys got something you never finished, something you really want to do, something you never said to somebody, something. And you're told no, even after you pay your dues, who's got the right to tell you that? Who? Nobody. It's your right to listen to your gut. It ain't nobody's right to say no after you earn the right to be where you want to be and do what you want to do. The PG-rated story feels like a warm trip down memory lane, with Burt Young and Stallone visiting all the old stomping grounds to remember imagery from the earlier pictures. Meanwhile, Geraldine Hughes portrays an old acquaintance who re-enters Rocky's life and begins an unlikely friendship. James Francis Kelly has a minor role as Hughes' wayward son, but his inclusion seems entirely superfluous, without any real conclusion or payoff. 
Milo Ventimiglia joins the cast as Rocky Jr., proud of his celebrity father but tired of living in his large shadow. In a passionate speech to his son, Rocky forcefully declares, It ain't about how hard you get hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. It's this incredible message, so excellently delivered by Stallone, that perfectly encapsulates the primary theme of the entire series. It's a constant through-line at the heart of all seven pictures. Perseverance above all else. Returning to the director's chair after a 21-year absence, Stallone shows no sign of rust, filming this picture's dramatic moments with long lenses and a cold color palette. Later, the main fight is uniquely recorded with HD cameras to better match the look and frame rate of an HBO pay-per-view event. The inventive and fast-paced editing here, which intercuts Gatorade commercial-like visuals with slow motion and flashbacks, is particularly effective. To cut production costs, the film shot on location before a real boxing match. The crowd in attendance was an actual audience, who upon seeing Sylvester in his robe began to chant, Rocky, Rocky, completely unprompted by the film crew. This piece of movie trivia exemplifies the incredible legacy of this iconic hero. Composer Bill Conti only wrote one new piece of music for the film, but after doing such great work on four earlier pictures, who can blame him? Appearing as himself, boxing commentator Larry Merchant remarks that, there's an old saying that every great champion has one great fight left in him. And this 102 minute movie is proof Stallone had one great story left to share. Following the poor reception of Rocky V, he felt obligated to give this character more proper closure, and he definitely succeeded. An excellent comeback story about determination and unfinished business, and necessary viewing for all fans of the series, Rocky Balboa is a sentimental conclusion to the best underdog in sports history. And finally, my thoughts on the latest entry in the franchise, Creed. Released on November 25th, 2015, the 40th anniversary of the opening scene in the original Rocky, this sports drama doubled its $35 million budget within a couple weeks. Okay, think, Bart. Where have you seen Roman numerals before? I know, Rocky V! That was the fifth one! So, Rocky V plus Rocky II equals Rocky VII, Adrian's Revenge! As prophesized by that classic Simpsons joke from decades ago, this is the seventh film in the Rocky franchise, serving as both a spin-off to the original saga and a sequel to Rocky's continuing story. Following his breakout directorial success with 2013's Fruitvale Station, the young Ryan Coogler took on the daunting task of injecting this aging franchise with new blood, and thankfully, he completely succeeded. With the help of co-writer Aaron Covington, the 133-minute script is a well-rounded, honest, and believable story. Although it's the first chapter not written by Sylvester Stallone, it still pays homage to the older entries while maintaining its own unique flares. Michael B. Jordan stars as the title character, a young boxer who seeks out help from retired Balboa to follow in his late father's famous footsteps. Any ill will Jordan may have gained from starring in that awful Fantastic Four reboot just a few months prior has been completely washed away here, thanks to a truly spirited and raw performance as Apollo Creed's illegitimate son, desperate to build his own legacy while still honoring his boxing heritage. Portraying the Italian Stallion for the seventh time, Stallone is, amazingly, better than ever, showing a tenderness and vulnerability we've never seen from him. When challenged with difficult decisions, his emotional reflection on life and his late wife are incredibly moving. Everything I got is moved on, and I'm here. But you know what? It's okay. Because I said to myself, if I break, if I'm hurt, whatever, I ain't gonna fix it. Why bother? And I'm just some bum that's living in your crib, just, just nothing. You're a good kid, a good fighter. But you got your whole future ahead of you, mine? Back there, like all them guys on that wall, in the back, in the past. Sly's pitch-perfect delivery here is layered with resignation and fear, and might even score him another Oscar nomination. At 69 years old, Stallone shifts into his new role as teacher effortlessly, dishing out lessons like, that bell doesn't mean you're dismissed, that bell means hell. To put his seniority in perspective, he's the same age that Burgess Meredith was for the original picture. Tessa Thompson, meanwhile, is featured as Creed's love interest, who does great work in their powerful and romantic scenes together. Between the nostalgic callbacks and well-written dialogue, there's also some truly excellent boxing on display in the PG-13 rated film. The most outstanding example is an entire two-round match that's captured in a single, fluid steady cam shot. Easily the best looking and most realistic fights of the entire series, every punch lands with ferocity and every cut and stitch feels earned and authentic. Kugler also impresses during the slower moments, allowing each dramatic beat to breathe, like a nice close-up of a young Creed's fist relaxing. Ludwig Gorgonson's upbeat and heavy orchestrated score mixes well with contemporary hip-hop tracks, and even a few quick interpolations of Bill Conti's iconic music. Paralleling the arc of Rocky's original journey, Jordan portrays a new hero for a new generation, who is more than qualified to carry the torch. 
Even after 40 years, these themes of perseverance and fighting for what you want in life still resonate, perhaps more than ever. And with this newest entry receiving such universal acclaim, I won't be surprised if we see those red, white, and blue boxing shorts again. A wonderful continuation of a classic franchise that all fans will appreciate, Creed is a touching and inspiring story about determination and respect. I thought it was an awesome film. With the exception of the disappointing ending to the fifth picture, the Rocky franchise is a remarkably consistent and entertaining series, an uplifting group of films that makes you feel empowered from just having watched them. Stallone cannot be praised enough for the monumental character he created, one that will endure long past the final bell. Well, that does it for tonight's episode, but here's what we'll be discussing next time if you'd like to leave a comment review. And if you click this information icon, some related videos will slide out for you to watch. Once again, my name is Jonathan Paula. It is good to be back. Thanks for watching, and have a good movie night.